nation, San Diego and the Super Bowl, the goal of all 28 NFL teams, the Bears plan to return. The man Chicago feels will lead them there is back in action. Finally recovering from shoulder surgery, number nine, quarterback Jim McMahon. The Bears have won 23 in a row when the colorful McMahon has started as Chicago's field general. And he returned to the lineup in the second half last week in Tampa. Rallied the Bears from 20-0 down. Final minutes, he hit the Bears' new star, Neil Anderson, with a winning touchdown, a 27-26 win. Today in Soldier Field, Chicago, before a sellout 66,000, McMahon will start for the first place Bears against the 1-5 Kansas City Chiefs. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Paul McGuire, 11-year veteran of the old American Football League Wars. Merlin Olson is off on special assignment. It's a beautiful day in Chicago for football. 60 degrees, cloudy skies, very little breeze, and the Bears are atop their division, and they've got McMahon back. Now, the interesting thing about the Bears, they started this season thinking that they wouldn't have McMahon at all. All of a sudden, they have him back and starting. What an added boost it is for this football team. Now, how does Kansas City win this game? They're one and five, last in offense, last in defense in the NFL. They have to do one thing in particular. They have to hold on to the football. They have a good defensive football team, Dick, but they, they turn the ball over too many times. And if you get behind on the Bears, you just can't come back. Well, with McMahon as the general, the Chicago team, as you all know, is a team full of characters from the refrigerator to the great defense to Walter Payton, one of the greatest of all times. But there is a new star in the loop. Isn't it amazing? Yesterday, we talked to Kansas City people. We asked about Walter Payton. They talked about this man, Neil Anderson, leading receiver, leading rusher. They say he does it all. We said again, what about Walter Payton? They again talked about Neil Anderson. That's the man we're going to see. Anderson averaging 6.6 yards a carry and a concern of head coach Frank Gans in his initial season with the Chiefs, a man who quotes Shakespeare, and it's been all tragedy the last five weeks. No comedies for him as Gans, 48 years of age, as is Mike Ditka. They grew up near each other in near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dick, Mike said to us yesterday, doesn't our team look loose? We said he looked like he was a little, little nervous about the game. The kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers, as Kevin Butler kicks it off, and Paul Palmer, the All-America from Temple, is deep for Kansas City. Sun trying to break through the overcast here in Chicago, a perfect November 1st for football. Palmer in his own end zone. He'll take it out, hesitates, and barely makes it to the 19-yard line. Jim Morrissey, number 51 from Michigan State, made the tackle. The Chiefs line up this way with Bill Kenny, the veteran quarterback, rookie Christian Okoya, and Larry Moriarty. They're going to start with their big fullbacks. Okoya at 253 and Moriarty at 237 behind Kenny. Give him a little more blocking strength and test the inside of the Bear defense. The wide receivers are Page and Carson, tight end Jonathan Hayes. That's Carson, who had a big game against San Diego last Sunday in motion. Boy, Akoya was met by number 22, Dave Dorson. Dorson, the safety man, was in the backfield, almost took the handoff from the quarterback, Kenny. They said they were going to have a safety blitz and blitz in this game, but I didn't think they were going to do it on the first play. A generous gain of one. It'll be second and a long nine. The offensive line, Donnelly is the center, Alt and Eatman the tackles, Baldinger and Attics the guards. Apoya and the rookie from Azusa Pacific blasts for five. It'll be third and four defensively for the Bears. Hampton, McMichael, the refrigerator, Perry, and Dent on the front line. The linebackers as good as most any in the NFL. The Giants might claim they're better. Wilson, Singletary, Wilbur Marshall, Reggie Phillips, and Vesty Jackson at the corners, and Todd Bell and Dave Dorison, two hitters at safety. Herman Hurd, number 44, replaces Larry Moriarty. He's out on a wing. Third and a long four. Out of the backfield, complete to Hurd. It's a first down and more as he's bumped out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Reggie Phillips. 
Dick, on that play there, what they did is they took Stefan Page and put him in motion, which put triple formation to the right-hand side, and then you'll just see Hurd checks up the block, slips out of the backfield, no one on him, picks up the first down. Well, the Chiefs really needed to do something positive on their first possession, didn't they? At least get one first down to get them started because they did so poorly against San Diego a week ago. Moriarty and Okoya now behind Kenny who fumbles a snap from center picks it up and moves straight into the grasp of Dan Hampton number 99 and the Chiefs fortunate to hang on to the football. Bill Kenny pro bowler in 83 when he broke Lenny Dawson's season records passing for the Chiefs grew up in San Clemente California. Second and nine. Bears, in essence, with nine men on the line of scrimmage defensively. Now ten as Singletary moves up. Akoya. Akoya. A hard three. Otis Wilson and others on the stop. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna talk to Kenny because that, that ball was snapped with less than one second on the clock. Christian Okoya is a big fullback, and he's got excellent hands. You see his thumb is taped, but here's Okoya. But coming down the line of scrimmage, Otis Wilson is an outside linebacker and meets him in the hole. Six plays for the Chiefs on this opening drive. Three on carries by Okoya. Good average, four and a half in his rookie season. Shotgun third and six. Kenny has a man. Stephon Page at midfield has a first down for the Chiefs. Vesti Jackson with a tackle. Good throw. That was a deep out and had plenty on it. Excellent throw. Brought down by Vesti Jackson. There are the Chiefs. Akoya, Moriarty, Carson and Page, the wideouts, and Jonathan Hayes starting for Walt Arnold at tight end. One of the changes made by Frank Gans, Walt Baldinger, Donnelly, Addicts, and Lutz, the offensive line. A couple of first downs for Kansas City on this opening drive. Three and a half minutes played. Hayes, the tight end in motion. Carson. First down at the 34, the Bears. So suddenly this becomes an interesting drive for Kansas City. Kenny reads safety blitz by Durson. Number 22 comes up in the middle. Watch Durson, and he's picked up right at the line of scrimmage by Addicts. Kenny reads it, sees Carlos Carson, knows that it's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, hits him right in the seam. 16 yards on the play. Carson, who had nine catches, nearly 200 yards against the Chargers last Sunday. Changing his play is Kenny at the line of scrimmage. Draw to Moriarty. Ran into his own man. The refrigerator Perry got to him first, but Moriarty plowing forward to the 28-yard line in a gain of six. William Perry, the refridge. Take a look at it. He's on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and that's Bollinger, number 77, blocking him. Perry fighting things off. He's just trying to find Moriarty. Now he can't find him, and he sees him come back up and hole slips off, makes a tackle, but that's a seven-yard gain. Chiefs driving into field goal range, at least on this first drive. This is Akoya, nothing there to the outside. Richard Dent shut it off, and there was... Plenty of Bears there to finish Akoya. The Bears, Hampton, McMichael, Perry, and that was the Super Bowl defensive front four. No changes there either. Wilson, Singletary, and Wilbur Marshall. You really love Marshall. I know Paul McGuire. You'll be talking about him. Phillips and Jackson. If there's a weakness, some would say maybe the corners, and then Bell and Dorison, who play safety like linebackers. But what helps the corners when the linebackers, as good as they are, put heat on the passer. It's a lot easier for corners. Third down, four and a half. Here they come. Kenny outside to Carson, and the Chiefs will score a touchdown. Well, Kenny read the blitz well and got some key blocks, and that freed up one-on-one -on -one as Reggie Phillips, the corner man, could not handle Carson, and the Chiefs score first. 
Dick Reggie Phillips made a rookie mistake. He went for the ball instead of going for the man. 29 yards on the score. 10 plays and 81 yards for the Chiefs with the opening kickoff. Lowry out of the hold of Kenny for the extra point. And Kansas City certainly gets the Bears' attention as this crowd very quiet at Soldier Field. Nine minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, and the Chiefs have scored on their first drive. Ditka. And another drive like that, and those lips will be moving, and some growls will be heard along those sidelines. Maybe he was right. They were a little too loose yesterday. Well, Kenny, very impressive, went four out of four on that drive, 66 yards, and hits Carson. 29 yards for the score. Carlos Carson's fifth touchdown of this season to lead Kansas City. Tampa Bay last week scored in their opening drive against the Bears and did everything but win. And McMahon saved the day for Chicago in the second half. Dennis Gentry, a dangerous return man, is Lowry. Spins it high, but fairly short. Gentry at the eight. He carries it back to the 35. Sherman Kokroff with a tackle. Let's go back to the scoring pass. All right, take a look at 35. Christian Acquaya. Wilbur Marshall comes in. He picks him up. Kenny Red Blitz sees Carlos Carson on the outside, one-on-one -on, -one on Phillips, and it's a touchdown. But the fact that Kenny is picking up the blitzes with his team. Now, when you take a look at Carlo, Car Carlos Carson, here's what Phillips does wrong. Instead of going for Carlos, he goes for the interception. Once he does that, Carson catches the ball. It is now touchdown. That's what you give up. Jim McMahon gets a hand as he brings the Bears offense on the field, trailing 7-0. Walter Payton, the setback behind him. And it's Payton. No gain for Walter Payton, who starts today with only 96 yards rushing on the season and a 2.5 average. Payton, Neil Anderson has been brilliant in this young season. Willie Galt, the great sprinter with the deep threat. Ron Morris, they really like his hands. And the veteran at tight end, Emery Moorhead, solid, underrated. Covert, their best lineman, Bortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, and Van Horn, the front five. Anderson in motion. McMahon's first pass attempt. Screen to the tight end, Moorhead. Fumbles the ball, and Kansas City's Deron Sherry recovers. So the Chiefs with a lead 7-0 and an early turnover. It was a super call because putting Neil Anderson in motion to the outside sets up the screen. The linebackers are out of there. You see Dino Hackett 53 go back straight. Now here the blocking is back to the outside. Forts is out there, no problem. But with the hit, and I believe it's Jack Del Rio, it gets the hit, fumble, Kansas City ball. Del Rio and Bill Moss from behind had a hand on it as well. Cherry with a recovery. First down, Kansas City at the 41 of Chicago. Let's see if they can capitalize. Kenny over the middle. Almost intercepted by Phillips. Into a crowd as he tried to hit Stephon Page. Chicago Bears that time really disguised the defense. It looked like Stephon Page was out there with Phillips all alone, but all of a sudden they backed out double coverage. Early scores, Indianapolis. Eric Dickerson, the new Colt. Cincinnati a field goal lead against Houston. And quiet around the NFL and our early scores. Here's 7-0 Kansas City. 8-13 left in the first period, and the Chiefs with a turnover. Draw play to Moriarty. Maybe a yard. Wilbur Marshall from Florida. Moriarty looks like he takes about three steps, Dick, and then he starts to move. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be quick enough to get to that hole on the draw. Moriarty, former Oiler, drafted in the fifth round in 83 out of Notre Dame. Third down and nine. Henry Marshall, the veteran wide receiver in. Kenny completes it 
to Carson. First down inside the 30. 12 more yards. Mike Singletary made the stop. Dick, did you look at the Bears' defensive line? They had four people coming in, and watch where they all end up. On the ground. This offensive line just pushes everything aside. Look at Kenny. There's not a black jersey to be found. All he had to do was wait for Carlos Carson to get in the clear. Deep purple. They say in Chicago, you're going to get letters. Deep purple jersey. They don't have my eyes. <laughs> it's black. <laughs> First down, Kansas City with the lead, 7 nothing. Three catches already for Carson as he picks up right where he left off in San Diego last Sunday. A quickie outside, incomplete to Page. Almost looked as if that might have been deflected. Otis Wilson, 55 on the coverage. Otis Wilson. Kenny, who played his freshman football at Arizona State under Frank Cush and then went to Northern Colorado, where he was a tight end and a backup quarterback. He was really a long shot to be a starter in the National Football League at that position. Akoya, a big hole. And he does get off the blocks. And comparing him to Moriarty, Akoya, he's at top speed in a hurry and picks up a big nine. What did, what did Ditka say to us, Dick, yesterday? He said, this guy, you can't bring him down with one man. Just take a look at the blocking up front. Donnelly's blocking up front, Akoya, and it takes three people to, or four people to bring the man down. And that's what Ditka was afraid of. The Chiefs trying to equal their total in the first quarter of the first six games. They lead 7-0 with six minutes left in the first period. Big play, third and one. Go straight at him. They do, and Akoya picks up five easily, and that one almost went the distance. Dave Dorison at safety saved the score. We're looking at two. We'll get to it in a second. Well, this is, you get the other end of it now. We go to <laughs> NFL Live. <laughs> All right, Dick, here's Eric Dickerson, his first carry in a Colts uniform on their first possession of the game. He didn't start, but Ron Meyer got him in there a few plays later. He gains four yards on that carry, and the drive winds up with Indianapolis kicking a field goal for a 3-0 lead. Thank you, Bob. First down for Kansas City, leading 7-0, and Kenny looking for more. He's got Hayes open. Touchdown, Jonathan Hayes. Kenny is putting the ball on target. There's just no question about it. But the offensive line, this isn't the same offensive line that, that the Kansas City Chiefs people saw a week ago. San Diego just did everything they wanted to do against this offensive line and the backs by blitzing. All of a sudden, they've just held the Chicago Bears right on the line of scrimmage and then come back and throw a touchdown pass. Late flag on the play, apparently. Although we have not had any, I guess there was not. So the try for point by Lowry, who is on a streak. 131 straight extra points made by Lowry, second only to uh, the Steelers, Anderson. And that one high and deep and down the center. And the Kansas City Chiefs, a 14-point underdog coming into the game, lead by 14 with 5.19 left in the first period. Guy. Jonathan Hayes with his second National Football League touchdown and the Chiefs lead 14-0 after the fumble recovery at the Bear 41. And now Lowry to kick it off. Gentry and Sanders deep for Chicago. A penalty of five yards back to the 30 against the Chiefs for the, what, end zone celebration? Delay of the game, end zone celebration. You can't be happy when you score now. <laughs> Spiking minus five. Gentry at the 13. 20. 40. One man to beat. Lowry, and Lowry won't touch him. one back for a score and he really rambled on that one it 
in commercial. Enberg said to me, he said, hey, you know, he almost had the first one. He'd been a step sooner. Take a look at what happens. Watch the blocking. The two men coming down get taken to the inside. Once you do that, you open the outside hole. Jeffrey makes a break. The only man he has to beat is Lowry. And then number 37, Douglas, tries to catch up. He can't. Kevin Butler, good job of spotting the ball, and a penalty flag is down. Offside, Kansas City. Well, the extra point will be good. They'll tack it on to the kickoff. Dennis Gentry, 88 yards for the kickoff return touchdown to get the Bears right back in this in a hurry. Five yards against Kansas City on the extra point. Five minutes left in the first period, and the Bears pull within a touchdown, 14 to 7. And what an asset to have a man like Gentry and a man like McKinnon that can get you a touchdown in 10 seconds. Well, five minutes left in the opening quarter. It's 14-7 Kansas City. Five-yard penalty for the offside. So Butler kicks off from his 40. Paul Palmer in the center, deep man for Kansas City, and that's aimed toward Palmer, who will not take it out. Let's go back to the touchdown. First, the Kansas City score, the pass from Kenny to his tight end. Kenny is reading the defenses so well because now he's got Jonathan Hayes. He's one-on-one he's, he's, he's -on, -one on Bell. But watch what Bell does here, Dick. He jumps too soon. If he had waited a second, he'd have been there, been able to knock the ball down. Hayes, it's touchdown. Now Gentry. I think the guy that misses him is Daryl Colbert, number 81, who was a receiver. Right about here, he commits himself. But he is a wide receiver. He is on offense. He doesn't play defense. I'll give him that excuse. 88 yards for Gentry, and now Kenny starts at his own 20. No contact, so no offside. Okoya. Steve McMichael, who played at Texas. I asked him, do you really hunt rattlesnakes? You know, oh, McMichael, yeah. he's a character. There's no question. He's your kind of guy, McGuire. And uh, I said, what is the key? to uh, hunting rattlesnakes. He said, well, you get a dumb sportscaster. <laughs> and I said, hey, that's all. I don't need to hear anymore. <laughs> Second and seven. Sneak up on him very carefully. <laughs> Kenny off to a good start. Two touchdown throws. <laughs> Going deep for Carson. Can't quite get to it as that ball died on him. Try to cut inside Reggie Phillips. Well, the Chiefs are going for it. If that ball would have been put on target, it might have been another touchdown. Carlos Carson made a great adjustment behind Phillips. He knew that he couldn't go through him to get to the ball, so he just took a step back and then went around him. The ball would have been long enough. Might have been gone. Came in leading the Chiefs with 15 catches, four for touchdowns. Carson, former LSU Tiger. And there's a young man that they didn't think was going to make this football team in training camp. There's where the Bears put the pressure on you. Third and seven, deep in your own end. Boy, a jailbreak by the Bears. <laughs> Kenny had no chance. I was talking about how well the offensive line was doing. This was absolutely total breakdown. Wilbur Marshall, Hampton, just watch what happens. If they just caved the entire offensive line in, back on Kenny, he has no shot. Durson's even back to the safety. Hunt by Kelly Goodburn. McKinnon takes a chance, gets away from that first man, Robinson, and then is tackled at the 41-yard line. McKinnon, who returned a punt for a touchdown against Tampa Bay last week. 43 yards on the kick, two-yard return, and a timeout with 3.52 left in the first period. With Paul McGuire, and people ask me all week, well, what's it like to work with Paul McGuire? I say, well, I work with Al McGuire. I mean, <laughs> you're out of the same cut of cloth. I mean, anything can happen. Well, yeah, what's it like working with Paul McGuire? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to yourself when you shave every morning? I said to myself, what's it like working with Dick Inberg? And I'm finding out it's hey, wonderful. It's nice, it's nice to have you with us, Isaac. And I know you'd like to get out of New York and the studio there. It's good to get you back in the booth where we've admired you worked for a long time. It's nice to be in the fresh air. Yeah, with NBC and then later with ESPN. So the Bears trailing 14-7. Look for a tying drive as McMahon goes to work. Neil Anderson. 
former number one pick from the University of Florida to the Kansas City 44 in a first down Del Rio and Lewis with a tackle as we check our 10 minute ticker. New England ties the Raiders Pittsburgh jumps out at Miami 14 nothing Washington with a field goal lead against the Bills Indianapolis as you heard earlier Eric Dickerson has played for his new team Houston with a lead at Cincinnati 7 3 New Orleans an early leader as are the Cardinals here 14 7 Kansas City. To the 43 yard line the couple are still a veteran defensive end number 67 with the tackle as we look at Walter Payton go back to the huddle here's one of the greats of all time I and mean, he's Payton's place is Canton Ohio he'll he'll be in the Hall of Fame when he is eligible and, and talking with Ditka yesterday it was really interesting this is a year of dignity for Payton his last as a bear I think and, and they should afford him the chance to, to, to go out in dignity I mean here's here's a man that did that played with teams so many bad teams and all of a sudden he got to play with the good teams and I think the most amazing thing about him he's never missed starting a game except for one and he said I could have started that game and they wouldn't let me and he still has the attitude that fresh attitude of a young rookie he loves to play loves being a part of this team he's announced that this will be his last year could change his mind but it does appear this will be his final season second down eight long eight tight end Boso in motion it's Anderson nothing there but Jack Del Rio the former All-America in Southern California you know one other thing when you're talking about Peyton Dick I, I just have the feeling if he does retire in fact retires after this season he's probably going to show up at practice for the first two or three weeks anyway just out of habit <laughs> he loves it so much really did you go through that uh, withdrawal when you you hung him up I, I was so much fort more, more fortunate than anyone for the simple reason that I went right to NBC and started doing games and I was still involved with the players seeing the games and at the game and it's going to be difficult not being able to do that for Peyton Anderson loses two so third and ten Offside. the give is to Dennis Gentry but Moss and Koch had jumped offside whether or not drawn offside we'll see five against the Chiefs so instead of getting the ball it'll be third and five now here's one of the corners is Willie go look at take a Willie go check it fighting Ross okay oh, I, but that's legal because you know why it's legal because golf's trying to block him that's why if he were going out if he was going out for a pass pattern that would have been holding defensive signals sent in from the chief sidelines third and five at the Kansas City 39 Les Miller giving the signal Art Still, the 10 year veteran from Kentucky, able to grab him by that right ankle and not let go, and the Bears will have to punt it away. Art Still is one of the guys that, you, you know, Dick, for, for years when you were doing these guys, the Kansas City Chiefs, it's 3 4 all the time. All of a sudden now it's a 4 3 where he can go one on one with a tackle, not worried about being double teamed all the time. Brian Wagner was with the Denver Broncos when we saw them play in London. Jitter Fields from the University of Texas. What a name. <laughs> Jitter Fields. They hope for Jitter Bug, his running style, not because of his uh, nerve condition in this game at Soldier Field. I'd say he's a little nervous right now. Chiefs like to go after the punt. They get the kicker, but they got the ball too, so that will not be roughing. There may be no finer man in that talent, particular talent, going after the punt. Albert Lewis. Well, take a look at the punter. He turns right in towards Albert Lewis. Albert Lewis is, they wouldn't have called it anyway because he was blocked into the kicker. 
So the ball goes out of bounds at the 27 yard line, a 14 yard kick by Wagner, and he was lucky he got the 14. Lewis was almost too far in. He was right on his foot. 14 to 7, Kansas City, 106 left in the first period. Have a little trouble with the chain gang getting established, so referee Tom Dooley holds up play. The Chiefs with an 81 yard drive to open the game and Kenny hit Carson 29 yards for a score then a fumble by Emory Moorhead recovered at the bear 41 and Kenny took him in immediately the touchdown pass 15 yards to Jonathan Hayes the Bears have countered on an 88 yard kickoff return touchdown by Dennis Gentry don't stop throwing the ball Spinning out to the 32-yard line. You heard one of the calls, Zebra, Zebra, as there were changes both offensively and defensively. That's one guy say, I don't want to cover Paige. I'd rather cover the referee. I'll take the Zebra. <laughs> it is as, as complicated as it seems. Seems logical to me. Carlos Carson out and Henry Marshall into the game, number 89, who... Had three catches last week. He's the all-time pass receiver in Kansas City history. Passed Otis Taylor. They both wore 89. He's far right. They run the other way. Poya breaks one tackle. And the young man from Nigeria is to the 48-yard line before Mike Singletary can bring him down. Okoya just runs right through Dent, but it isn't that easy to make this tackle because all Dent could get on him was an arm. Take a look to the right of your screen, number 95, also being blocked by Moriarty. But here comes the blocking to the outside. Excellent blocking by the, by the offensive line. Ballinger, number 77, gets downfield, and it's first down. Well, the Chiefs with a first down near midfield as the first quarter comes to an end. Here at Soldier Field, Chicago, the underdogs lead by seven. Hey, the Chiefs one and five, the Bears five and one. You would have thought we made a mistake. The helmets and the numbers should be reversed. But look at that. No yards rushing, only 17 passing for Chicago, while Kenny and Kansas City have had the ball over 11 minutes, less than four for the Bears. That one turnover cost a touchdown. Gentry's kickoff return for a touchdown, keeping the Bears in the game. That's Carlos Carson. Boy, the way he's going, he's going to have a bundle, and a flag is down. Five yards on the pass play. If I, I just got to believe that this may be a personal foul on Dent, because what happened is he was blocked at the line of scrimmage. Okay. 72. 72. Very. Late hit on the passer, Kenny, by the refrigerator. Well, I was just looking at Dent on the other side because he had double team. But here comes Perry. They have a deal on with Hampton. Perry goes to the outside. He beats Donnelly to center. And then, yeah, but who's he, who did he hit? Oh, he hit him with his helmet, but it was so fast. And when you have 335 pounds hitting you, even if it's a little nudge, uh, it's felt by Kenny. And that was the call. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. He's got a quick head. <laughs> Who was it? yards and a first down for Kansas City at the 32. Akoya to the 27, about five. Wilbur Marshall, number one pick, one of the many number ones playing on this Bear team. They've really selected well through the years, the last 10 especially. Tough linebacker, number 50, Mike Singletary, Wilbur Marshall. Marshall goes up in the hole and gets blocked by Moriarty, but look at Singletary. Heads up, he knows how big a Coy is, and he knows he's going to get some help from Marshall. Hit him head up, what you have to do is stop him, hold him till you get some help. Second and five. Coy again, pinned. Inside the 25. Dino Hackett with a neck injury. We understand Hackett has been injured as well as Albert Lewis and Kevin Ross. So that could really be a struggle for the Chiefs defense if they lose those three outstanding performers as you look at the scores. Dino Hackett, the only way to keep him off the field is if it's broken. And then it's questionable. He may come back out. 
third down and two for Kenny and the Chiefs. Akoya has the first down at the 20-yard line. 253-pound Christian Chocho Akoya. Akoya, not only does he have quick feet, but he gets them up. All right, Moriarty, number 32, is the fullback outside. All he wants to do is to isolate on Wilson. Just hit him for a second to hold him. McMichaels, number 76, tries to tackle Akoya at the feet. He just jumps out of that, and Wilbur Marshall finally makes the tackle, but it's a first down. They give Akoya a breather. Herman Hurd into the backfield, number 44, with Moriarty. Now for a one. Threw that one away. Carson broke to the inside, and Kenny threw it away. He saw too many bare uniforms. Carson, you have to believe he ran the wrong route, because on the other side of the field, Stephon Page, number 83, was into the post, into the middle of the field. Carson ends up there. You don't have two wide receivers in the same spot. He was supposed to run towards the post, back towards the corner. Didn't do it. Darrell Colbert, the rookie from Texas Southern, is wide right. Carson in motion from the near side. Draw play, Moriarty. For a couple, Wilbur Marshall makes another tackle. We could have recorded Wilbur Marshall's name maybe 30 times before we even started today. Just plug it in. <laughs> Wilbur Marshall, Wilbur Marshall. He finally made All-Pro last year after he was overlooked, uh, they felt, in the big Super Bowl season. Okay. Kaufman there, he's going to the inside, and now they're double team and Singletary. You think they don't believe? Here's Singletary and Paul Kaufman. That's a takedown and almost a pin. Tenth play of this drive, third and seven. Here they come. <laughs> Stephon Page, the nearest chief, but Kenny had to unload in a hurry, and here comes the field goal unit. Nick Lowry to try first field goal attempt in quite some time. He's only two for two on the year. Well, that's got to be a sick feeling for a quarterback when you know that they're going to send seven or eight guys at you, and you've only got a second to get the ball off. It'll be 35 yards on the attempt by Lowry. Third all-time NFL as Morton Anderson of the Saints has now moved into the top spot in accuracy. Gary Anderson and Lowry third. Tremendous play by Hampton, but this is the fall of the kicker. The ball was too low. Lowry didn't get the ball up. Watch right in the center of the line. Number 99 hits the center, drives him back. Now watch Hampton's arms up in here. Look at how high he is. Bang. That's beautiful. So the 35-yard attempt, nothing for the Chiefs. It remains 14 to 7. Hampton with a block. Back in Chicago, Illinois, along Lake Michigan Soldier Field, the Bears, Hampton blocking the field goal attempt, 14-7. Kansas City leads. And McMahon starts from his own 25. Walter Payton hammered at the 27. Hampton from Arkansas. But he's not playing football. He's quite an accomplished musician and he's a character we're congenial they're not uh, monsters of the midway he says we're congenial monsters we say thank you use napkins and stuff <laughs> <laughs> he's a beauty he really is he, and he loves playing little town in arkansas farm boy jacksonville arkansas by number 55, Lewis Cooper on the deflection out of Moorhead's hands, and it fell right into the lap of the Kansas City linebacker at the 36-yard line. What did I say to you in the open? The Kansas City Chiefs, in order to win this ball game, must not turn the ball over. We have two turnovers now by the Chicago Bears. And that ball was a little bit to the outside, but Moorhead had both hands on it, should have caught the ball. Cooper is there and said, hey, look what I found. 
Here comes Moorhead off the line. Now, they're going to be picked up by linebackers. You've got Pearson on one side and Cooper here. They're just double teaming him. Watch what happens. The ball hits him right in the arms and then right into the hands of Cooper. And that is an interception. You notice how he got his hands underneath the ball. Emory Moorhead involved in both turnovers. It was his fumble that set up a Kansas City touchdown after a reception. Now, the interception through his mitts. Into the arms of William Perry goes Akoya. And Perry, a man with his size who can dunk a basketball. Well, Chiefs defense aren't on the field now, but when they get on the field, that's something to remember, that uh, they have been the best in the NFL the last four years with 118 interceptions, but only six counting the one today. And you think about the Chiefs last year, Dick, getting to the playoffs with really no offense. Kenny, a fake pass, and that didn't fool the Bears at all. Little pump fake, and then the draw, and Perry and Wilson were in the thick of it. The refridge. The gallop and roast. <laughs> he is... The I, I'm right like, well, you know, the Galloping Ghost, of yeah. course, through Great Red Grange here with the Bears, okay. number 77, and needs the Gallop and Roast, and he can run. Oh, I know he can. Shotgun. Third down and eight. Nine Bears right on the line of scrimmage. down as the Bears pouring through on Kenny. It's against Kansas City, so it doesn't make any difference. Illegal motion. Number 76, illegal formation. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. John Alt. Here's a nice shot of this defense. Take a look at the defensive line. You see the penetration now. Here comes Dent, number 95. You see the flag. Wilbur Marshall was actually blocked about one yard off the line of scrimmage and then almost gets back there. But the guy that got back there was Otis Wilson, 55. Or you win games on defense, and the Bears have had the best defense in the NFL if you count the last four years, and they're right there again this season. They're coming after him. And a good kick by Goodburn. It will bounce into the end zone. Touchback Chicago at the 20 yard line. 43 yards minus the 20 on the touchback and a timeout. 920 left in the opening half in Chicago. Look at Christian Okoya and the offense of the Chiefs. 69 yards rushing to the Bears. One yard rushing. They've led the NFL in rushing the last three years. Peyton and Anderson behind McMahon from the 20. Peyton gets about four on that carry, so it's four carries, seven yards for Peyton. And Peyton at that time did not go where he was supposed to go, where the play was designed. Didn't go there. Moorhead with a couple of turnovers is benched by Ditka, and Cap Boso from University of Illinois has replaced him at tight end. Football name. Cap Boso, Casper Boso. Anderson. Down at the 30, and I believe he has a first down. Notice, notice the difference coming out of the backfield when Anderson takes the ball as opposed to Walter. Walter's lost a few steps, and I don't want to be the guy talking about a legend. But take a look at Walters out in front. Peyton, number 34, gets an excellent block to the inside. And here comes Anderson. Quick steps. Good blocking downfield. That's Willie Galt blocking on Lewis. Albert Lewis, number 29. Oh, they gave the Bears a tough spot. Well, now they change it. They had placed it at the 29. Now they move it almost to the 30, where it will be just shy of a first down. Neil Anderson, a name certainly to mark for Chicago because he has star written all over him. Bears unable to sustain any drive, and we're 8.40 left in the first half. Oh, they have two men in motion, so that'll be five yards against Chicago. They had the wide receiver Morris in motion, and then Peyton started in motion. 
And that's a five-yard no-no. Well, you also got a defensive linebacker on the top side. I think it was Jack Del Rio, number 50. He was he was offside across the line of scrimmage. We have an illegal shift. That's Two it. men moving on the offense. Offsides, defense. Penalties offset. Third down. Well, that's better news for Chicago because they get another crack at it third and inches. The old double dipper. <laughs> but Del Rio was across the line of scrimmage. And made contact. Now the Bears again on third and inches. Well, this would be a great spot. You know, Ditka has a little gambling blood in him. To everyone looking for the little short sneak and go up on top and try to get six in a hurry. But you better make it work. Same play and McMahon behind the wedge blocking up the middle has the first down. Jim McMahon taking his wax as he goes on the snake. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting the Budweiser Most Valuable Player in today's game. We're announcing that at the conclusion of today's contest from Chicago. McMahon, they say, is such a good racquetball player. We asked if he was the best on the Bears. He said, not only the best, he can beat most of the other guys playing left-handed. And that's, that's the only way most of them will play him if he does play left-handed. But he forgot to tell all those guys that he's ambidextrous. That means he can't use either hand. Complete and a fine catch as Boso goes up to spear that one with Lloyd Burris all over him. Nice catch by Boso, who had a couple last week in the second half at Tampa Bay. Got man-to-man -man coverage, Lloyd Burris, number 34, the strong safety. And watch, he sees the tight end. He's got Boso right there. I mean, it was a good play all the way around, not only by the offense, but also by the defense. Veteran Burris, part of that great back four of Kansas City of Lewis, Burris, Cherry, and Ross. A man has a man wide open. And number 83, Willie Gold, leaping high, saved an interception. You bet he did. Albert Lewis, number 29, Dick, was just standing there waiting on the ball because he knew the ball was overthrown. And... And Albert Lewis is just going to sit now. He's going to sit and wait. Now, he's covering Galt, but Galt goes up in the air and tries to catch the ball, but just gets his hand on it to knock it away, or else this may be touchdown. McMahon unhappy with himself. Third and seven. If Willie Galt was seven feet eight, he wouldn't have caught that ball. Boy, that Anderson can fly in the open field, and we're going to move quickly ourselves to New York. Well, earlier, Dick, we showed you Eric Dickerson's debut with the Colts. Here's a 12-yard run by Bo Jackson of the Los Angeles Raiders. He's carried four times for 23 yards. We'll have the second part of our exclusive interview with him coming up at halftime. Dick? All right, well, stay tuned for that. Bo Jackson Now the Raiders now in the harness. Marcus Allen and Bo Jackson as the Raiders trying to put some pieces together. And, of course, Eric Dickerson now joins the Colts. We'll be seeing them next week, a couple of weeks down in Miami. Don't know the plays by then. Walter Payton skidding down for yardage. Let's see what the scores are elsewhere. New England takes the lead. Grogan to... Lucy Tatupu, a pass. Pittsburgh's lead cut in half. Washington leads by 10 at Buffalo. Boy, did the Bills give up a lot for Cornelius Bennett? I, I know you don't think so, but... I, I really don't think so. Bell, even though Bell was the number one draft pick, Bell was not happy there. They were not happy with Bell. I think that's a nice marriage. Send them as far away as you can. Yeah, but two first and a second plus Bell for Bennett. But they got a live player. You know, not looking at a draft choice. They're looking at a player. Cornelius Bennett, the best linebacker in college football last year. Second and nine, McMahon. Almost intercepted. It would have been the second for Lewis Cooper as McMahon had to throw it away as he was being pressured hard by Art Still, Bill Moss, and Bell. You know, we've seen Kansas City dick go offside about three different times. And what McMahon's doing that a lot of teams don't do, they'll come up on first and second down, take the snap on the first count, on the hut one, whatever. What McMahon's doing, he's going on like three, four, 
Kansas City is sitting there in that defense waiting and waiting and waiting. And all of a sudden, they, all of a sudden they start committing themselves, and he's getting them to go off sides. Yeah, one of the reasons uh, McMahon gets him in and out of the huddle, he calls the plays for the most part himself. That saves a lot of time, so he can play with that uh, snap count. Exactly. There it is Offside again. Offside again. McMahon goes through and throws it away. Willie Gold down the sidelines, but the Chiefs, their own worst enemy, that would be bringing up fourth and nine. Instead, it's third and four on the penalty as Mike Bell jumped offside. But Mike Bell just, his, his foot slipped, and he might have pulled a groin muscle on there because, I mean, he was just laid out. He never moved once he hit the ground. The penalty. Frank Gans, former jet fighter pilot. He flew commercially a pilot Continental Airlines back in his younger days and a graduate of the Naval Academy. What he's trying to tell him is they be patient with this thing. Here's McMahon again, this exact same thing we we're talking about. Dick, he went on like a four count and, and they know he's going to throw the ball, McMahon, and they want to get a good, good off the ball because they have a four man line knowing that there's going to be one guy blocking them and they're just going too soon. Be patient. the bear touchdown on that 88 yard kickoff return comes up with a key reception on third down kick when you know you have a four man rush there's only one guy in the backfield someone has to cover this man now robinson has got to be covering gentry take a look here goes gentry out here robinson number 30 is sitting in the middle of the field now he shows up overruns the play Deron cherry has to come out with along with pearson to make the tackle but number 30 Robinson was supposed to be on Gentry. Five minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half. The Bears trail by seven. McMahon. The Boso touchdown. Cap Boso. NFL touchdown. Didn't we see in the first quarter Kenny throw it to the tight end when he sees man-to-man -man coverage? Boso, he does it this time to that young man. Number 86, Boso. <laughs> great coverage. I mean, not great coverage, but a great move by Boso to be open for the touchdown. And McMahon found it. So the blocked field goal attempt at one end. The Bears take over and march for a score. And now Butler tries to tie the game. <laughs> The first sustained drive of this game by the Bears, and after the extra point, a little push and shove. As the Bears culminate an 80-yard march in 10 plays after Hampton had blocked Lowry's field goal try. And Boso was wide open. They beat the linebackers last week, did the Chargers, and that's where McMahon attacks to score today. While we were away, we focused on the fiercely competitive head coach of the Bears, Mike Ditka, and uh, he was reading the act to his offensive line. We say to see how easy it is when you block somebody. Yes. Give, give McMahon some time. He can throw it. Jim Harbaugh, the number one pick, as you see, the scoring drive of the Bears from the University of Michigan. He said, boy, am I lucky. Got to play for Bo Schembechler <laughs> at Michigan. Then I get to play for Ditka. Was I prepared for Ditka? <laughs> and Ditka really likes him a lot, too. Paul Palmer. He's dangerous. And he's out to the 35-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown as McMahon looping the ball over the linebacker covering Boso. Well, we saw in the first quarter where Kenny threw a touchdown to Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, found one-on-one -on -one coverage. Here we go again. Boso's out there. Lewis Cooper, number 55, trying to cover. You see Deron Cherry, number 20, come into the picture, Dick, but that wasn't his man. He was helping out on the wide receiver. Cooper had him man-to-man. -man. He couldn't cover him. Kansas City's 14-0 lead. Has melted away. 4.54 left in the half. Akoya. 
out to the 43-yard line. The thought for Kansas City was they know they're going to be plays, as we have seen in this half, where Kenny gets smothered, no chance. But with the style of defense of Chicago, if you guess right and the right play is called, you get the one big block or a mistake, you can break a big play. And Akoya has come close to a couple of very long runs. You know, and, and in the first quarter especially, we saw Kenny read the blitz so very well, and then on top of that, find, found the, the man that was one-on-one -on -one covered and hit him. Don't stop doing that. Changes his play on second and one. Akoya again. That's a first down at the 45. Two more yards for the rookie fullback of the Chiefs. He has 60 yards in the half. You know, even sitting as far up as we are, Dick, when Akoya runs into the big man, the refrigerator Perry, it's like a thud. I mean, it's not like pads clicking. It's the doom right here. Oops. <laughs> and you just don't go any further. That'll shake the jello. <laughs> Akoya, a solid half of play. That was one of the keys of Gann's game plan. He had to run the football against the Bears. From his own 45, Kenny underneath to Carson. Carson knocked out of bounds at the Bear 33. Reggie Phillips finally got to him. Todd Bell in pursuit the entire distance. 22 more yards for Carson. Dick, did they clear this out beautifully? Take a look at it. You see Jackson there, but I don't think he's covering Carlos Carson. You see the mix-up. Here comes Bell, 25, trying to cover him. Otis Wilson, number 55, misses the tackle right here. Todd Bell, you're going to see him catching up at this point. But I don't know if that was his man. It might have been Vesty Jackson's man and let him go when he went across the middle. Yeah, ja Jackson appeared to get picked off in that By his own crowd. man. Yeah. So the Chiefs continue to move the ball well. A little draw play. Boy, oh, he's a powerful man down to the 23-yard line. Just ripping his way through a couple of bear tacklers. Ten more for Akoya. He went through a couple. You know the two he went through? I believe it was Dent, number 95, and also Wilbur Marshall, 58. Watch this. There's one. There's Dent. He misses. That man down below is Wilbur Marshall, 58. He usually does not miss. And here's Akoya picking up a first down in the secondary. Well, he's going to have 100 yards by the half, pal. Dorison <laughs> had to bulldog him. 2.45 left in the half. The Chiefs, once again, in scoring territory. Dick will yell at the offensive line. What do you think uh -oh. he's going to say to these guys? Little mix up in the adjustment, and they ran out of time. Apparently not. They must have gotten off just at. Well, no, the flag. Now we do see it. They didn't quite get off the play. First down. You know, there's a situation. Why doesn't Kenny just when he, see, he can see the clock because it's right in front of him and it's at field level, a 30-second clock. Just stand up. Just stand up. He, and take he couldn't out, get the saying. backs settled. Moriarty and Akoya. Now watch. Here's Akoya. Let's go two steps right. Okay, Moriarty, you go that. Now I want to go back this way. No, I want you over here. Now move back over there. Get over where you belong. Now that's that's no. Okay, too, too much late. time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is Valentine. Here's Soldier Field. Mike Greer, NFL. So a timeout taken. We have not received word as to which team has called it. Well, this isn't the same Chiefs team, Paul McGuire, that has stumbled against Seattle and the three losses by the replacement Chiefs and then had a tough game last week at San Diego, losing 42-21. You can bet. You could bet, Dick, that they worked on blitzes all week long. I'm talking about the offensive line and the fullbacks and the halfbacks working on blitzes because they knew it. Once you watch San Diego, what they did to Kansas City, and the Bears do blitz, you know they're going to come. You, know, you said what Kenny should have done is just stand up and call timeout. He did. He did. That's right. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't well, it nice to go up and say, you know, I was right once? <laughs> oh. When you see that 12 penalties, that was for 141 yards against Kansas City last week. So it is first and 10 with 227 left in the half. Ball at the Bear 22. Akoya. Yeah, 
just as that hole opened, Otis Wilson down low was able to get a hand on a coy underneath, trip him up, short yardage. At halftime, Bob Ahmad, Charlie Jones uh, joins the guys in the studio and Frank DeFord. Paul McGuire with us here in Chicago. Berlin Olson off on location and shooting for his new television series, and that is going to be a terrific series. Aaron's Way. Two minute timeout given here at Soldier Field with the score the Chiefs 14 and the Bears 14. It's the Far East. How far? Dayton? Nope, Taipei. You can't get there from here. Are they calling roughing the passer again? But you're right, because when Moriarty, by the time he got to that end zone, it was double zero on the clock. They, would have, they wouldn't have gotten a, a field goal out of it. Well, he milked the clock, but uh, it almost went dry on him. <laughs> That's right. Well, no signal that there was a penalty, and Lowry to try the point after. And Kansas City in a rather remarkable first half showing. Team that's last in the league in offense, last in the league in defense coming into this game, coming against the, against the highly favored, powerful Bears, takes the lead 21 14. Let's see if time All right, let's run take out. a look at the clock. And Moriarty, Okoya blocks, Durson comes to the backside. That ball is thrown to the outside. Singletary can't get there. They might have had time, depending on how fast the official kind of waved his arms on Dick. As Don Shula, sometimes two seconds isn't enough time. The game can end. <laughs> it's an eternity. You got Singletary on Moriarty, couldn't get there. Kenny threw the ball right to the outside where he had to. Touchdown. Bill Kenny's third touchdown pass of this first half, and under pressure, he gives the Chiefs a 21 14 halftime lead. And Kenny, uh, against the kind of defense that he had to face today, no Kansas City, and yet you really believed we'd have a game, and you said the key at the start was. Don't turn the ball over, and that's the one thing Kansas City has not done. And if, if they don't turn it over in the second half, I think they can stay with the Bears and beat them. Well, the Bears might well be behind 21 to 7, but great teams have a way of manufacturing quick scores. And the key to their staying close was this play. First half, Dennis Gentry after Kansas City had taken a 14-0 lead. Fields the kick off by Nick Lowry and takes it 88 yards for a touchdown. And Gentry is getting set now to return the kickoff that will start the second half. Gentry, who burned the Browns with a kickoff return here last year. Buffalo. Basically Zero. untouched the for the Four score. And he's being Nine deployed right now deep Zero. as Lowry sets it up. We're ready for the second half. Nick to kick Lowry's got to work Six. on his speed. <laughs> Interesting how those kickers, the first move they make is to go the opposite direction of the way the runner is going. So that then they chase him from behind. Did you do that? No, no. I, that's so you can get a good view of the rest of the players saying, help. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Nick Lowry lifts it toward the end zone of the Bears, and it's Gentry and Sanders. Gentry won't run it out. Let's look at the first half statistics. The numbers are going to be in the favor of the red and white of the Chiefs. 98 yards rushing, 83 by the rookie Akoya. 20 minutes, almost 21 minutes to less well, just over nine minutes possession time bears. So when you look at possession, first of all, take a look at the turnover. That's where the key is. Kansas City got the ball that went right up to that 14 points. But time of possession, the only time it's important is what you do with that time. And take a look what Kansas City did. 21 points. That's what's important. And a lost in that statistical matter was Dan Hampton's block of a makeable field goal that might be very important. We'll see at game's end. But man, lots of time. And throws it into the back of Ron Morris. Morris has not been the target. Dino Hackett entered in the first half. You can see that brace around his shoulder pads. Hackett starts the second half. Number of plays. Tough to score when you don't have the pumpkin. Someone said you could score more times on defense, more ways on defense. The only problem is, wouldn't you rather have the ball? <laughs> I think Mike Dick has reminded them of just that fact. Really hasn't called Neil Anderson's number much, and when he has, it's been productive. Here it comes. Anderson on the draw. 
Hit hard at the 23 yard line. Dino Hackett and Art Still. Lloyd Burris to help out. Third and seven, Chicago. I told you the only way Dino Hackett's not going in the game is that the neck is broken, and then it better be really broken. I think what they do with this guy Hackett, he's such a, a good linebacker. They lock him in an armored car from Sunday to Sunday just so he won't hurt anybody during the week. <laughs> he's the, the a Butkus tough kid. mobile. Yeah, he, is. he is a throwback to Butkus. Dick Butkus is now a member of the Chicago Bear radio broadcasting team, and he and Paul McGuire exchanging pleasantries and stories before the game today. Third and seven. Man, and Art still wraps him up after a two-yard scramble, and the Bears start not well in this second half. We'll have to punt it away. See, that's not a sack because it was a gain of three, but you credit the defensive secondary. That time Gentry came out of the backfield where they hit him a couple times in the first half, Dick. Burroughs was sitting there right on him, waiting on him. McMahon had no one to throw the ball to. Brian Wagner's first punt nearly blocked by Albert Lewis. Did skid forward 14 yards. Jitter Fields, who was cut by the replacement Colts and then signed by Kansas City and took one back 85 yards against Denver for a score. It's quite quiet here, isn't it? Fair catch fields at the 42 yard line. So Kansas City opens in good field position, and Bill Kenny brings the offense on the field. Number nine is the number for the quarterbacks today. Kenny wearing the same as McMahon, and you think back in Chicago Bear history, number nine of the past, Billy Wade wore that single digit. There's old nine. I shall return. Well, McMahon is going to have to. Engineer another comeback as he did in Tampa Bay, if that's to prove prophetic. If I were Chicago, I think I'd get away from that safety blitz and play a little bit more double coverage. Akoya. And the big rookie barrels out to the 47 48 yard line. Uh oh. That time, Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, number 85, was blocking on Richard Dent, number 95. Now, you see Dent, he's going to the official saying, hey, wait a minute, this guy's holding me. Is this holding? You're allowed to get your hands out in front. Here goes Jonathan. Now, this is the only part that's holding. When you kind of double dip him a little bit <laughs> and get him right under the pits and also grab the hair there, that hurts. Second down and five. <laughs> Up the middle. Richard Dent made the play. He was the only bear on this side of the ball, and had it not been for Dent, Okoya had some open daylight ahead. Richard, I don't think, is blocked here. Just take a look at it. That's all blocking down, and no one blocks Dent. All he does is scroll on the line of scrimmage. When Christian Okoya turns up field, they went helmet to helmet, and you, you know who lost. Okoya who fumbled 49 times in college, and that was the kind of tackle we expect to see the ball pop free. Third and four. A quickie and complete to Page. First down at the Bear 43. Dave Dorson. The Can't say enough about Kenny in this game because every time that there's a blitz on, third down situations, look who he finds. He goes out here to Stephon Page, and there's only one man cover him. They release the double coverage. Durson comes over. He's the only guy there. The next man is a linebacker, Wilbur Marshall. And uh, you know he's not supposed to be all uh, that far out covering him. Kansas City with a first down. Three minutes, ten seconds into the second half. Going deep for Page. Touchdown! What a catch by Stephon Page! Oh my! The Page, 43 yards, and the Bears touchdown. When you look at where this ball is thrown, it was a great reception by Page. But when you look where Kenny threw the ball, and I'll tell you, he did not short arm this baby. He laid it right out over the defense, over the safety he was coming across, and it was touchdown. Bears, who had allowed no more than 20 points any time this season until last week, and now have given up 28 today. 28-14, and Bill Kenny has thrown 
four touchdown passes against the defense regarded as, if not the best, certainly one of the very best in the NFL. 43-yard touchdown reception as Bill Kenny, his personal high, four touchdown passes, four different receivers, Carson Hayes, Moriarty, and now that man, Stephon Page, as Lowry kicks it off toward Gentry. And he's going to return this one. And he's out to the 25-yard line, slowed by Lewis Cooper, and then secured by J.C. Pearson, number 24. Here it is, the flea flicker. The flea flicker and we're already back, but there's no penetration by the defensive line. Total blocking upfield, and then the ball over Durson. We're going to get a better look at it. What happens... It's when Stephon Page gets alongside of Vesty Jackson, he's just loping along, and then he turns on the burners, beats him, but Kenny put the ball the only place it could be caught, over top of, of Durson and beyond Vesty Jackson. Well, that showed two things you talk about as a scout looks at a receiver in college, concentration and that burst of speed to the ball. Page showing both. First down at the 25 for the Bears, down by two touchdowns. Dumps it out of the backfield of Payton to the 28-yard line. Only three. This is what Frank Gans had to say after the loss at San Diego. I'll get rid of people here. Yes, sir, you play or you're out of here. It was that kind of week for Kansas City. It was one of desperation emotionally. He had to get this team ready. He made changes, and they have played very well. And looking him eye to eye last night, Dick, he meant it. And he said, if, you're not going, if you don't want to play here, go play someplace else or don't play at all. Second down, a long seven. Peyton out of the backfield. Steps out of bounds, shy of the 30. Aaron Pearson, Dino Hackett there. by Dino Hackett. One of the men that started last week, Tim Cofield, he was benched. Lewis Cooper was benched briefly as he made a change. He was really unhappy with the play of his outside linebackers. And, of course, Dan Fouts, he just picked them apart clean. Don't you don't you sit here kind of wonder, what's some, is there something wrong with Neil Anders? I mean, you know, he's carried the ball, I think, three times totally in this ball game, And they're not going to him. They're going to Walter Payton. Anderson, who started with 231 yards to lead the Bears, 6-6 six, six is average per carry, 17 catches to lead the Bears. His number doesn't come up very often. Dennis Gentry dropped at the 34-yard line. That'll be just short of a first down, I believe. You see what, uh, and I believe it, and it's the all the way on the other side of the field. Gentry's laughing. What he did is he was going down. He threw the ball forward because he didn't think he had a first down. So he wanted to throw it beyond the red marker. Also got some skid marks there on his helmet. They were banging his head around a little bit. When you see McMahon, he goes to the outside. Now, Pearson is covering him. Watch what Gentry does. He catches the ball here. He's down. He sees the marker. Look at him. Look at the marker. Now, watch. Now, the ball was pulled out, but he was, he was happy it went ahead. I thought he had thrown the ball out. Now, they mark it at the 34 anyway, but he did get enough for a first down. And a big first down for McMahon and the Bears at the 10-31 mark of the third quarter. Here it comes now. We can see it better. Pearson's got his hand. He's pulling the ball out. I thought he might have thrown it up there, but he was already down at this point, and that is not a fumble. The player was down, and he did have the first down. Willie Gall to the left. Ron Morris to the right. The 36-yard line. Let's check other action now into the second half around the NFL. New England with Grogan replacing the injured Eason. Pittsburgh and Miami. Apparently that's going to take four touchdowns to win that one. Washington. They'll need Bennett. They'll need Bennett. Indianapolis 10-7. Tampa Bay 3-0. 9-7. Cincinnati over Houston at the half. 21-0. New Orleans at Atlanta and Philadelphia. Eight points better than St. Louis. Hmm. Here, 28-14, by far the most surprising score of the day. McMahon to goal. It's good. Willie Gold at midfield. Working against Kevin Ross on the right corner, a 13-yard play. First catch for Galt. 
49. It just looks like you can throw this all day long. Now look how far Ross is. Right now he's not even in the picture. He's at least five yards off a of goal. Now I he looked at Jack Del Rio, number 50, the linebacker coming out. But there's just no way that Del Rio can get from the center of the field outside to help short on that play. But the one thing that Ross is not going to do, and that's give you the bomb. And Gold is the man that will stretch that defense. First down play. Anderson, ooh, is he hit hard. Lloyd Burris coming up from the safety spot to drop him immediately, just shy of the KC 45. We talked about the best lineman on Chicago is Jimbo Covert. All right. Is he coming down here on Dino Hackett? And look at Dino. No, you're not. You've got to take a real wide move to get around him. I mean, you don't, you're not going through Covert. Hackett, who leads Kansas City in tackles, had 13 in the first game, 16 in the next, 12 last week. Underneath to Anderson. Boy, does he turn it on and a first down inside the 30. I'm glad they listened to us down there. <laughs> get him in the game. You've got to get Gall in the game. You've got to get it, uh, this young man, Anderson. And they're trying to cover him with a linebacker, and you're not going to do that. Hackett, number 56, is coming up on Anderson, but he's just too far away. And look at the strength of Anderson. He's hit and picks up another five yards off the spin. He runs the way Peyton did 10 years ago, doesn't yeah, he? he really does. There's another guy sitting on the bench that, that we may see sometime today, and that's Thomas Sanders, number 20, who can also fly. Bears with a solid drive downfield. To McKinnon, Dennis McKinnon at the far stretches of the end zone, almost tucked it away. Kevin Ross got a hand in there. I tell you, it's going to be difficult beating him deep. Look at Ross. Now, watch when he turns. When you turn away, he starts to lean back into McKinnon. He can feel him. He knows the ball is in the air, gets his hand in. Ross, and he has McKinnon man to man, but McMahon is looking at McKinnon all the way. At the end of this, you'll see Ross's harm right in. No chance to catch the ball. Excellent defense. And pretty camera work. John Gonzalez, our director, and Larry Cirillo, our producer, right in the action. Second and ten. Blitz. Ooh, and Peyton took his eye off it as Dino Hackett came over to challenge. <laughs> Dino Hackett said, hey, you may, you're going to be a Hall of Famer, and you're the greatest, maybe the greatest running back ever in the history of football, but if you're coming out there and you're going to catch it, I'm going to hit you. Walter does take his eye off the ball, hits him right in the helmet, but this is what they all booed about. Right at the end of this, Hackett threw Walter on the ground. Tenth play of the drive at the 27 of Kansas City. Hackett last night, it's not true, the story we heard today, they had a little you know, Halloween costume party and he won and they said hey wait I haven't put the mask on yet <laughs> <laughs> when are you going he's to Kansas City again he's me no, no, I, know he I know that's not a true story third and ten out of bounds the intended receiver Neil Anderson as Hackett all the way into the end zone on the coverage and it looked as if he was beaten all the way but he stayed right on him didn't he watch what he does though Dino Hackett is a defensive back now you've got Anderson going down and Hackett's got to run with him he gives him the wide berth now watch what happens he's looking at Anderson's eyes and when Anderson's ready for the catch watch him jump in the air right at the end right now he sees when the ball's there he anticipated the ball being there and that's not pass interference look what Ditka's going to do fourth down and ten he's not going to go for field goal at the 27 yard line he's going to go for a possible touchdown he needs ten to just sustain the drive boy that's a bold move early in the second half McMahon throws and misses Gentry by a mile, and Kansas City takes over on downs. Oh, oh, my. Well, this is the thing, you know, that we talked about last night with Frank Gantz. He says they'll go on fourth down because of their defense. Yeah, but they're down. That defense has them down by two touchdowns. He took this to Ditka. Take a look. He's got his jacket off, and here comes McMahon, but he wasn't yelling at him, Dick. He was just explaining something. You threw to the wrong man. Michael and Perry, the two tackles, drilling. 
short yardage. But Akoya is flirting with a 100-yard rushing game, and that is no mean feat against the Bears. Only once in the last two seasons has a man accomplished that. Eric Dickerson, middle of last year, 111 yards. And Akoya has 90. Akoya's out. Herman Hurd's in. Second and nine. Singletary on the blitz. And the throw to Hurd, well covered by Marshall. If that had been a good pass, Marshall would have had a touchdown for the Bears. He was right there. You can't, and Nick had told us about Marshall, you just can't take him off the field, no matter what the situation is, because Wilbur Marshall can cover backs. He can, if he asked him to, I bet he can cover receivers. Maybe not Page. Boy, he's tough. Last year, all pro, fourth in tackles, forced four fumbles, had five interceptions, five and a half sacks, couple of touchdowns. And a part three. Did you have a pair? <laughs> now the crowd trying to help out the Bears. We're down to four seconds. Heard perhaps didn't, <laughs> but he felt it. Richard Dent and company Otis Wilson. Here it goes. Now take a look. It's a draw play. Here comes Dent. There's Otis Wilson. Down goes Hurd. With six and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Good burn. His third punt. Dennis McKinnon has two punt returns for touchdowns this year. First time in Bear history. Someone's been able to do it. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. And a dying spiral that McKinnon will let bounce. And it takes a bear bounce. To the 50-yard line. 23-yard punt. At the 50, there's a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Unnecessary roughness against the Chiefs. Penalty is a face mask against Kansas City. At least that is how the public address announcer offered the information. And we'll wait for Tom Dooley to make it official. I know with a 23-yard punt, they may, uh, unless they tack it on right here. And that is the discussion, whether or not it's a penalty to tack on now or whether or not you go back and give them the option. Decline! Touchdown! It would not have been tacked on, so the Bears decline. They'll take the short punt, and start from the 49 of Kansas City. And you sure didn't want him to punt again. Look at this. Here, Frank Gantz. You think he's happy with this? He loved this. He had the special team. For what? For holding. Face mask. <laughs> and a timeout. 6.08 left in the third quarter. On the field. Why, just reminding me that the largest crowd to ever see a football game here at Soldier Field, you said you were here in 1927 when USC and Notre Dame played before 123,000. Yeah, but they never opened the gates, though. That's what was the problem. They were all outside. They never saw the game. <laughs> Are you surprised about Dick not going for the field goal there? Yeah, we're going to talk about that after this play. Dick, it, it, it does surprise me. Neil Anderson trying to go wide. And he's cut off after about a four-yard gain. You know, you brought up the, the great point. They're down 14 points, the Chicago Bears. And it, uh, it would have been about a 43, 44-yard field goal. Not out of Butler's range at all. There's no two-point plays after a touchdown. So to get two touchdowns, you're still going to be tied. You're going to need a field goal somewhere along the line to win this game. And why they didn't take it at that point. That is uh, supreme confidence in the Bears' ability to the defense, which has uh, held Kansas City, gives McMahon the ball right back in good field position. Second and five, Anderson the other way. Yeah, they're starting to use him now. And Sherry gets him out of bounds at the 26-yard line. You know why? The man we're talking about hadn't been carrying the ball very well, Walter Payton, but he gets a block on Pearson that you're not going to believe, puts him on the ground. Take a look at the left of your screen. Walter Payton is out to the outside. Look who is on the ground. Pearson's down. Payton puts him down. You knock off the outside linebacker. The only man that can force it is the weak safety, Deron Cherry. Here comes Payton. 
Down goes Pearson. The whole outside is wide open. The next guy to him, Deron Cherry, Boy number like, 20. Boy, like chopping down a tree. What a block by the veteran Peyton. First down at the 26. McMahon off play action. Oh, right into the arms of Bill Moss. Or is it still? It is Art Still, the 6'7 veteran who was in the right place. And boy, McMahon just hoping there wasn't someone there, but still comes up with a sack. He's quite an interesting story. He and his wife, uh, Liz, they want a family of between 10 and 15, they say. They've already adopted three. Well, better get some more. Rent some kids. <laughs> this, was, this was a great play. Uh, what I was laughing about is Willie Galt ran probably the longest route in, in, in pro football history. That's if your quarterback has 20 minutes to throw the ball. You can make all those moves. Second and long screen to Peyton. The blocks 25. And out of bounds at the 17, close to a first down. Well, it's been a while since we've seen that strut kick of Peyton in the open field. His trademark and his glory years here in Chicago. 57 Thayer coming out to the outside. Watch the block he gets. Here's the screen. 57 is there. there. That's Pearson again. Down. Once you take that outside linebacker down, Walton shifted, or Peyton, Walter Peyton shifted in the second gear. Picked up, what, nine on it? Yeah. Oh, 16. That was, that was second oh, and 17. Right. In the sack. Third and one. If he wouldn't have shifted, I think he might have had the first down. Anderson hit in the backfield. Doesn't make it. What a defensive charge by the Chiefs as they beat the Bears at the line of scrimmage. Bill Moss. Okay, Coach. If they don't have it, you kicking? <laughs> They're not going to send in the field goal unit again. They lost a yard on the play. You're going to need a field goal sometime. Maybe he's looking at overtime. He figures two touchdowns and that'll do it. With four and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. 19 of 20 times inside the opponent's 20 yard line. Ball is at the Kansas City 18 yard line. Again, Ditka forsakes a field goal. Looking for a first down. Go up the middle. Anderson, I believe, has the first down. I don't believe he does. I do not believe he does. He hit a Anderson, wall. The ball carrier. He picked up the original yard that he had lost. But on the on once he did that, I don't know if that was hack at 56 that came in the middle or not. I don't think he made it. I think he just did, Paul. It's going to be like about a, two pebbles of the leather on the nose of the ball. A two-pebble guy? No measurement, first down. Kansas yeah, City wants a measurement. Mike Smiler? Well, it had uh, the Chiefs stopped him there twice, not going for the field goal. There had been a lot of fodder for tomorrow's Monday morning quarterbacks. Well, and we, we know now that all, all along, anytime they're down in this area, it's four down situation for them. Anderson in motion. Oops! So is McMahon. And finally down by Mike Bell. Well, we saw him exercising that thigh earlier in the game. and. You know, he hasn't played. I mean, he's been working out, but this is the most McMahon has played since last November. I think he got stepped on. It looked like the guard on the right side, which would be Thayer, number 57, stepped back and stepped on his foot. He's a little more agile than that. He is very agile. I'm not. He is. I mean, I, I would fall down running backwards. I'd fall down running front. Second down. <laughs> 17. 16 plus. Man over the middle. And a big game. Dennis McKinnon with 12 yards. And McKinnon not getting up. Ball to the 10-yard line where it'll be third and four. McKinnon, we saw him go down in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 20. Remember when the Bears beat New England 46-10, missed all of last year, and has come back brilliantly this year. Now, Hackett's going to come out to the outside. He's looking for McKinnon. You see him there, and Hackett misses him at this point. But here's the hit by Pearson in the back. With a timeout, just under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. 
the 10 for McMahon. Over the middle. Neil Anderson. Pass was a little high. And one of the Chiefs down. Could be Hackett. That's Hackett. Now he hurt his neck in the first half. Oh, he is tough. He really is tough. He, he's going off the field. It is fourth down. Now they're going to kick a field goal. Do you believe this? All right, here comes Hackett. Right here. Neil Anderson. Hackett just goes one way. Anderson goes the other way. And apparent 32-yard field goal. Make that 27 yards by Butler. And he drills it. The kick is good. Apparently... Ditka, not uh, confidence in Butler, who has not had a good early season this year from outside 40. They finally get down, and Ditka takes the three, and it's 28-17. And one other thing, too, Dick, how many times are you going to tempt fourth down? The averages, the law of averages are against you that you're going to make it. They did it twice in a row. They had fourth and four there. That... So it's 28-17 here in Chicago. New England has opened a 10-point lead. Pittsburgh by three at Miami. Washington apparently will win its sixth. Indianapolis buoyed by Eric Dickerson, a great player. Let's see, you picked the Jets, didn't you? I didn't, I just was curious. Uh, Tampa, Bay, <laughs> Tampa Bay 17 over Green Bay. Cincinnati has come back against Houston. New Orleans in a route at Atlanta in the third, and Philadelphia pounding on St. Louis. But the story of this football Sunday thus far is right here at Soldier Field, and the architect, Bill Kenny of Kansas City, with four touchdown passes against the highly regarded Bear defense to give the Chiefs a two-touchdown or more underdog the lead late in the third period. Two and a half minutes remaining. And it's still going to take two touchdowns to beat them. They've got the field goal out of the way. So this this one won't be returned as Paul Palmer kneels, takes the touchback. The touchback. And this Kenny in the team. offense on the field for Kansas City. You know, they, they say when a team is behind that you can load up and go ahead and rush them because they're going to be throwing the ball. The Bears do it a little bit differently. Now they have a team that's going to want to knock off some time on that clock and try to run the ball. Watch these guys load up, go after the running game. Akoya and Moriarty behind Kenny. No, it's Smurd. Yep. The parlor was full that time. No place for Hurd. Maybe a half yard. Boy, that Place. Mike Singletary's a player. I mean, I just, if you're choosing upside, just an attitude when you look into a guy's eyes, you got to pick him early. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question. You, you forced him to get on the scale yesterday. I no, admire I, your courage. I said, please. <laughs> Kenny rolling. Flag. The catch by Carson. Is that no, he's out of bounds. And there may have been motion against Kansas City. I don't know if you if Mike Singletary was so close to being over the ball. I mean he was leaning over talking to Kenny. Offside. Defense. Second down. You're right. Pass was incomplete. Mike so five yards against Mike. You just to go back to complete the story. Singletary is listed at 235 pounds. When you see him in the locker room, you can't believe that he weighs that much. I said, come on, you don't weigh 218. He got on the scales, and he's 231 stripped yesterday. And that's after practice. You just saw Singletary there. He was almost on it. Now, look at it. Is that intimidating? Well, he's across the line of scrimmage. I guess it's intimidating. And when Kenny looked up and said, hey, man, you got some bad breath. You happen to be in my face. Second down and five. He's dropped for a loss. Richard Dent in the backfield for Chicago. Who made the tackle? Attics, his offensive guard. I don't know. They, now, Dent's there, but watch where they drive the center. Watch where Moriarty hits. He hits his own man. He hits the center. That's McMichaels. Took the guard in the center back into the ball carrier. Dent just cleaned it up. Third and six. Six. 
in the third period, third and six. Oh, nobody there. That looked like a little hitch and go down the sidelines, but receiver Colbert just hooked to the sidelines and stopped. It was supposed to be just a straight fly pattern on that play, and Kenny knew that, that it, what happens, he read blitz, there was no blitz, and he threw the ball. They just didn't continue the pattern. Well, Kelly Goodburn, who did not have a good kick his last try, and Dennis McKinnon. Look out. He's okay, shaken after the pass reception, but a threat to go all the way. At the 35 of the Bears is McKinnon. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. And that, what that does is that forces the punt team to bring the two outside guys in, and they can't get anybody down. There's movement in the Kansas City line. they got to throw a flag. Kansas City did move. Penalty flag is down, but McKinnon will go after it anyway. 45-50, and down at the 48. Good field position. Lewis Cooper made the tackle. 38-yard punt. 10 yards on the return. Right now by Pearson. Refuse this one. A 37-yard punt. There's a flag on the flag. You know, this is what it does to the offense. Now, you look at the punt team, and, and they know that they have 10 men up there and watch these guys you talk about back on your heels look at those feet there's no way to stay up number 55 on the kicking team penalty is declined first down how many times do you talk about intimidation and that's a classic example of it and it starts right there yeah you look in the face of that man <laughs> you think he doesn't get after his own players the way singletary goes after quarterbacks covered 14 yards of air when he speaks you must listen. It's it's so right that he's back here in Chicago as the head coach. It would have been so wrong for him to go somewhere else. He is a bear. So from the 48, McMahon goes to work. Walter Payton in the flat. Diving down to the 43. Dino Hackett and Kevin Ross. That could be the last play of the quarter. Second Clock six. is down to 29 Second seconds. 43. McMahon probably will get one more off. See Jack Del Rio coming in and shaking his head. Peyton still has a little bit left. He's shaking his head. He, I know I had him. Had him lined up. I was going to zero in on him. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. catch by Anderson appeared he stabbed it one-handed at the end of the third quarter Del Rio on the coverage close to a first down and that is the end of the third quarter at Soldier Field in Chicago as you see McMahon hit Anderson Anderson delivers and the Bears close to a first down the score after three periods 28 17 underdog Kansas City and we'll be back after these messages from your local station after three quarters, a look at the official statistics. Again, bearing out the domination of the ball of the Chiefs, 26-40 to 18-20, although the Bears had it a bit more in the third. 275 yards to 181. Only 44 yards rushing for the Bears, and that is their strength. Well, the other, the other side, they, someone must have told them that Christian Okoye was close to 100 yards, and they've been shutting him down. The Bears open the fourth quarter. They measured, and that was a first down. No, it was not. Third and less than a yard. Bears, usually they're the ones who have that advantage. Play action. Huh? Go for it. Third yield. Yo. Look at Still. He's playing stand-up end here on this side. A man chased down from behind by Aaron Pearson, 96. Del Rio also in on the play. It appears that he picked up a yard. We'll see where they spot it. First of all, I think the ball was centered early. And then on top of it, I don't think Willie Galt had to play because McMahon was looking to fire at Willie Galt right now. And all of a sudden, Willie Galt, he's just walking, running down the field, jogging down at the, the, the top side over there. And then you don't want McMahon running around as banged up as he's been and to get him hurt. Well, you absolutely do not. As you look at McMahon, one of the points we should make about his surgery and, and the injury is rehabilitation. He is in better shape now, perhaps, than any time since he's been in the NFL. He is really solid, and part of that therapy was to really get himself uh, keenly 
in condition. We got a we got a body laying over there. Kansas City got face down. It is a first down. We'll see if we can through the crowd pick out the injured chief. Could be Hackett. Could be Pearson. It's Pearson. Aaron Pearson. Now what are they doing in the middle? Who goes in now? Is Hackett back? Yeah, he's back. Why not? First down Bears inside the 38 of Kansas City. Let's watch how Pearson was hurt. That's 96 chasing McMahon. Well, he's holding his stomach, so it, and it looks like his his heels came up and kicked him. It, it got need in the stomach. He just rolled right off the field. I don't think it had anything to do with the yardstick. They rolled that away. No, I think his knees caught him right in the stomach when he came down on McMahon. He's up. He's all right. They put you, they crack you, that little smelling thing under your nose. What are you pointing at 35 again, Neil Anderson for? You got a feeling he's uh, his number is going to be called here? Every time he's he's touched the ball, he's picked up eight, nine, ten yards. You've got to go to Anderson. Use him in the game. Peyton is to the right, and Anderson at left halfback, and they're both in the pass pattern. They go to Peyton, and he has about eight. Well, they're certainly giving Anderson more attention the defense as well. Yeah, they are, and, and it looks like the Chicago Bears are lining up on the ball. They're going to go with the hurry-up offense. That's interesting. Without a huddle, McMahon calling the play. One minute into the fourth quarter, trailing 28-17. Underneath Anderson, first down at the 25. Dino Hackett and Jack Del Rio with a tackle. He can keep McMahon can keep doing this because what happened is there's no blitz on. They're covering the linebackers are covering Walter Payton and Neil Anderson coming out of the backfield. But what the linebackers are doing, they're dropping off about eight yards and they're giving him that five yard pattern. Go ahead and take it. No huddle again. This time he's going. yards for the former Olympian Willie Galt and it's 28 23 as Butler tries to point after only the second catch of the game for Galt and Dick when we come back I'll show you how Willie Galt set up this touchdown he did it beautifully on Albert Lewis and McMahon using a no huddle offense to register the score a four point game 26 yards Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Tandy Computers, because there is no better value, only at Radio Shack. And by Liberty Mutual, for your personal insurance, business insurance, and financial service needs. The Bears pulling within four, and the long kick by Butler to Paul Palmer, who will take it at the 20. And now that bear defense is going to tee off on Kenny. And Kenny, in your thoughts, uh, Paul McGuire cannot go conservative. But first, go back to the Willie Galt score. I said before with the commercial how Willie Galt sets this up. Now watch what happens when Willie Galt gets down about the 10-yard line. He's going to look to the inside. As soon as he does that, watch Albert Lewis, 29. Look at his head. When he turns him in, he goes back to the outside. McMahon throws the ball where Albert Lewis just does not have a chance to get it. It's now touchdown. 28-24, Kansas City. 13 minutes left. Moriarty. No game. Wilbur Marshall made the play from Chicago. We go to New York NFL Live. This is Bob Costas in New York. Dan Marino is at it again, and the Dolphins have overcome the Steelers' early advantage, leading 28-24 now as Mark Clayton catches his second touchdown pass of the day. Marino has thrown for four, and in just four games this year, he has 14 touchdown passes. All right, Bob, and here Bill Kenny has four touchdown passes. 
looking for five, and he overshoots Carson, covered by Reggie Phillips. Third and ten. I am really glad to see that, and you mentioned it, Dick. He's got four touchdown passes, he being Kenny. What got you four touchdowns with throwing the ball? Go back to your game plan. Don't sit there and wait on the clock to go down. Give the Bears a chance to pin you in your own territory. Open the game back up again. You've got a four-point lead. Go ahead after it. Twelve completions and a third of those touchdowns. Shotgun. Yeah, but they may, they may, it looked like Dent on the top side was, was offside. But they're saying that the movement John against Old. Kansas City. Yeah. Illegal motion, 76 offense, penalty is declined, put down. Yeah, John All trying to block Dent, pulled back too soon, anticipating the rush. John Ald is over to the right of the screen, and that's where it happened. And look at Kenny, didn't have any time. Goodburn's kick takes a good roll, but here comes McKinnon all the way to the 42-yard line. So the Bears once again start with a possession in Kansas City territory. And this crowd now is really alive. They're on their feet. surprised to see McMahon go back out and do the same thing he did in that last drive. Take Walter Payton. Take Neil Anderson out. Hook him at five yards. If they're not going to blitz and you're going to cover them with linebackers, go ahead and throw it to the ball. Throw the ball to him. If they catch it, break a tackle, may be able to pick up 15. Payton up the middle. Scrambles for three. minutes and 15 seconds left here in Chicago. They're in the fourth quarter around the league. Marino with another big day for Miami. Buffalo's on the board. We'll give you the rest of those scores after this play. McMahon wasting no time between plays. Underneath to the tight end. Bozo, he has one touchdown. Oh, they love that. That's a Ditka kind of run after a catch. That's what I was talking about two plays ago. You throw that little dump pass for five yards. If you break a tackle, you're going to make it a 12-yard gain and not a five-yard gain. If that's what they're going to give you, go ahead and take it. Ball to the 28 first down. No huddle again for McMahon. And this time it's the Chiefs who score at least a brief point as they sack McMahon. Moss in there. Fourth sack today for Kansas City. Bill Moss. Second and 16 at the 34. I watched Peyton that time. Came, he came out and he looped. He went straight down the field. And I think McMahon looked at him right quick to see if it was going to be that little short hookup. Let's get the five yards. But Walter kept right on going. Of course, he didn't have any time either. Loss of six on the play. Second and 16. Anderson. Just wasn't there. He had thoughts about reversing his field, but to all sides were white jerseys. You've got to talk about the great play that time of Albert Lewis. You remember Albert Lewis just got beaten for a touchdown by Willie Gault. Now they throw a pitch to Neil Anderson, and he's five yards in the backfield. He didn't make the tackle, but what he did do was slow down Anderson long enough for the defense to get there. Albert I mean, Lewis, you think 29. he'd be off the line of scrimmage. Here he is right here. There's Albert Lewis in the backfield. Watch, he won't make the tackle, but what he creates is a loss because he lets the defense get there. Third and 17, a loss of one on the play. Man dumps it off, incomplete. Anderson, they're just trying to get the ball underneath, use his natural talent in the open field to get the yardage, but too tall, and McMahon could not be more unhappy with himself. And, Dick, that's a pretty good play, except for one thing. It was third down and about 18. 
and they were throwing a four-yard pattern, and, and you're, now you want him to pick up a teen on top, but wasn't going to happen. Kevin Butler is in the game. This would be a 52-yard attempt. Mike Tomzak to hold. Tomzak, of course, a backup quarterback, in case it is a fake. Butler drills it, and it's wide to the left. No good. No, oh, Butler misses from 52 after Ditka spurned a couple of much shorter field goal tries in the third quarter going the other way. Indeed, the win, however light it may be, is blowing in the back of Butler in the fourth quarter. It remains 28-24. Be honest. Okay. How does this compare? I mean, really where the action is with picking them back in the uh, studios in New York. Well, you know, I've got three hours and 15 minutes to do something here. Back there, I've got almost two minutes. you got to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and you say so much. <laughs> <laughs> I pick the wrong teams when I do. You get those out of Wheaties boxes? <laughs> they start from the 35, Kansas City does, after the missed field goal, and Kenny oh, has right. a miss. was beyond Stefan Page and he was able to spear what appeared to be the back end of the ball as Kenny drills won 52 yards Page was 10 yards in the clear well Vesty Jackson I don't know what he did whether he stopped and thought he had something deep but on the top of the screen Kenny sees him if he doesn't overthrow him it's a touchdown you take a look what Stephon Page had to do here. He had to outrun the ball and then make the dive for the catch to get him to the ball at the 16 or 7 or the 15 yard line. It was a great effort. I didn't like his touchdown catch earlier in this half. So suddenly Kansas City is in field goal range and Akoya fumbles and the Bears have it. Jolson at the 21 yard. Maybe 15, 20 minutes ago, that said how many times this young man fumbled in college? Well, let's see if he was down or not, or whether Dorson was already down when he recovered the fumble. They're going to look at that one, I think, on the replay. We'll look at it too. All right. Long bomb here. Here comes the ball. No, he's not down. That ball is out. Singletary's the man number 50 to strip it. Dorson picks it up, but that's a fumble. No question. And you so, jinxed him. You. So the Chiefs who were in field goal range and of course looking for more than that with a 28 24 lead lost opportunity the first turnover by Kansas City in the game time called and we would suspect uh, as it was called in this manner they may be checking on the instant replay but from our angle clearly a fumble the only question might have been if someone accidentally had hit Dorson while he was down recovering it plenty of time left it's fumble, boys. It's the easy one. This may be the easiest one they had all year. Talking about the replay official, the play stand is called. First down. That's right. I like it. First down. Sounds like a barker at the circus. First down. There it is. Singletary just gets his arm in there and strips the ball out. Marshall's there. Now that could have gone for a touchdown. That was very close to Dorson coming out of the pack and going all the way. McMahon underneath. Hey, that, that bozo's a load. Nick, this is what we're talking about. I don't want to keep harping on this thing, but that was like a four-yard pattern. Bozo on top of it picks up the catches the ball and picks up another four or five or three or four. And now you're looking at second and one. Now you can do anything you want. Play action. Send the big guy deep. Run the ball. Anderson. Right into Del Rio. Good solid tackle by the outside linebacker, number 50. Well, that bozo reminds you of Bavaro a little bit of the Giants, doesn't he, when he catches the ball and turns up field. Not only can he block, but he catches the ball, but he knows what to do with it after he catches the ball. If you weren't with us earlier, the starter, Emery Moorhead, the talented veteran of the Bears, had a fumble after a reception and then had a pass go through his hands that was intercepted by Kansas City in the first half and was benched by Ditka and Bozo. B-O-S-O -O from Illinois, a rookie, has taken over rather well. Third and one. And that'll get the first down. 
eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. First down, Bears. They trail by four. The Raiders pull within three. Miami, another score to lead by 11. Washington by 20 at Buffalo. Indianapolis, a close one against the Jets. Tampa Bay, an apparent winner. Cincinnati by two. McMahon again, no huddle. his helmet off. 21 yards. Look at golf. They're not using a huddle again. That's been effective. It doesn't give Kansas City a chance to do those uh, multiple uh, replacements on defense or reset their defense. And it, it just keeps them with, with four defensive backs, four down linemen, and three linebackers. And he's going to, with the first down now, he is going to call a play or two in that huddle. McBan's limping. the 46 yard line seven minutes left in the fourth quarter Anderson oh. about ten more before Kevin Ross could make the tackle a flag is down it's against the Bears for motion when you get on uh, the bad list let me put it that way of Mike Ditka like Moorhead <laughs> you kind of disappear I'm I was trying to find him down there. <laughs> oh, he's there. I just saw him. I don't know whether he allows you back on the field or not. 86 offense. Good example of that is uh, Mike Richardson, the starting cornerback who didn't sign, held out, came to camp late. He still hasn't found that starting job. He's, he's not back in there. Got to earn things. Been a long time, seven years since the Bears home cooking hasn't provided a win against the AFC. First and 15 from the Bear 49 as uh, McMahon limping to the line of scrimmage. Go back to the little dump passes again. Underneath, you're right, Anderson. And it's good for about uh, eight, nine yards. He Koch, trailing the play, made the tackle, and here goes McMahon again, calling the offense without a huddle. Get someone down again, Kansas City player down. thing about that play though dick that little dump pass it the clock keeps going and and you eat up a lot of time on the clock but they're only four down a touchdown wins the game for him take a look at it. here comes anderson he's out the linebackers are beyond him that's a four yard pattern now catch one two three four more yards you pick up eight you do that on first down just move the length of the field and then when they make the adjustment now that opens the middle like it did a little while ago with willie gold this game is the property of the National Football League, the Bears and Chiefs, all rights reserved. And it is interesting that the Bears have become America's team in terms of the NFL properties of all of the NFL material, caps, uh, jackets, jerseys, that sort of thing, sold last year. Over 19% of it had a Bear logo on it. So they are the people's choice around the country. I've got an old Bear t-shirt. I'm not going to let you have it either. Hey, was Dick, Dick was seen worried yesterday when he left after the practice session. He had a foot-long cigar, had his golf golf clubs in the back of his Rolls Royce, and drove off and played nine. A man in this town <laughs> who brings a Super Bowl championship to this city can drive in and do anything he wants. <laughs> That's right. But don't lean on his car. Aaron Pearson, the injured Kansas City player, being helped off the field and uh, under his own power. It's been a rough quarter for him. That's twice he's been hurt. You know, I, th I think the adjustment that Kansas City is going to have to make now is, is bring those linebackers up a little bit closer. Don't play that 7 to 10. Play it at 5. Because you've got a, a tremendous secondary back there with, you know, the likes of Ross, Cherry, Burroughs, and Lewis. These guys could play back. Get those linebackers up on the backs. Second down. And seven. Willie Golf wide open in front of our Albert Lewis. But see what happens, Dick. Now when you move the linebackers up. Now it opens the middle. Here comes Gold across the middle. There's no linebacker help for Albert Lewis, 29. Willie Gold has hit right in the hands with the ball and dropped it. Well, he was brilliant on the touchdown reception and then loses one that he'll try to get back. 
third and seven. That's yeah, scary sometimes to catch the ball over the shoulder, the almost impossible catch, and then they hit you in the hands. Too much time to think about it. The Bears and McMahon have used a timeout at 5.45 left in the fourth quarter. Underdog Kansas City still in front, 28-24. Throughout, Chiefs by four, but the Bears on a critical third and seven at the Chiefs' 43. Critical situation. Blitz, blitz him. Reverse to Anderson. <laughs> to the 35, and it looks to be good enough for a first down. We'll see. Is that the old Statue of Liberty? <laughs> it looked like he, he faked like he was going to throw. It's the Statue of Liberty, isn't it? It, 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 it is reverse. No, it, well, almost. But, you know, since they've gotten this man involved in the ball game, this is an altogether different offense, Dick, than we saw in the first half. He, well, there's another money play. They needed seven. They go to reverse, and he gets them seven and a half, eight yards. And the drive still alive with 5.05 left in the fourth quarter. Still pushing McMahon out of bounds. McMahon. That'll be for a loss, so that will count as another sack for Still and the Chiefs. He's had a big game, Art Still. That's his third. He had ten and a half sacks to lead Kansas City last year, and going into this year, 67 his number was his career total. McMahon rolling out there, and he saw her still. And he said, wait a minute. Now, I know how fast he is, and I know how fast I'm not. <laughs> so I think I'll go to the sideline. And the one thing about McMahon, too, did not throw the ball away, just up for grabs. All right, we've got our football team is moving. I'll take the three-yard loss, and then let's get on with it. Morris, the rookie, out of your picture to the left, and Galt split to the right. Underneath to Anderson. No, it's Galt. Dick, did you see McMahon when he came to the line of scrimmage? There was an official standing right in the middle of the field. He looked around him to see where the safety was. And then he throws it to Gold across the middle, makes the turn, and outran everybody. Gold second touchdown, more than making amends for that drop. Butler's try for a point. For the first time today, the Bears lead with 4.44 left. It's 31-28. Dick, when McMahon came out of the huddle, went under the center, he looked around the middle linebacker trying to find out where the safety was. Once he reads the safety, Jerron Cherry going out to his right, the right of the screen, he just brings Galt underneath, makes the turn, and ran away from Cooper. As you look back at so many incidents in this game, as McMahon again drilling it to Galt, he got the whole defense flowing as if he was going across the field, and Galt cut back. Yeah, once he, once he looked at the line of scrimmage and he saw that the middle was going to be open, he knew that Galt would be the man he's going to throw to because that was his pattern. But to show you the speed of Willie Galt is once he caught the ball, he made a quick turn, and bang, he was gone. Out ran Deron Cherry and Cooper, the linebacker. Here it comes. This is what McMahon was looking at. He knew that Deron Cherry was going to be out of there, covering Galt deep to the outside. So what he did is he brought him underneath. Once Galt catches, Deron Cherry comes into the picture. He can't get to him. He knocks off Lewis Cooper. Ross can't catch him. It's touchdown. McMahon's numbers shooting up positively. 23 for 34, nearly 300 yards. He has three touchdown throws to Kenny's four. That drive of 79 yards and nine plays started after Okoya fumbled deep in Chicago territory. So a complete turnaround when Kansas City, a chance to take a more than a touchdown lead, loses the opportunity, and McMahon takes the Bears back to gain the lead. 31-28, plenty of time, 4.42 left, and Paul Palmer 
frustrated, takes another touchback. Now, didn't the Bears only, they only had 19 plays in the first half, correct? I think in the first half they had 19 plays. They have a bunch now. Here comes Kenny, who's had a big day. Four touchdown throws. And nearly had another, except that he overshot Stephon Page, who was wide open on the last possession. And that proved critical because uh, Okoya fumbled shortly thereafter. Well, now he's got Carlos Carson down here all by himself with Reggie Phillips, number 48, trying to cover him. Eight seconds on the 30-second clock. Richardson, a fifth defensive back, ever so close to taking that one for six. <laughs> Mike Richardson sat up on the tight end and hit himself, and Kenny didn't see him. What he did see, Carlos Carson out here on Reggie Phillips one-on-one, -on -one. but as the ball was snapped, Richardson snuck out to the outside. If he, Like you said, if that ball were a little bit softer, it's seven. First down, 37, and that is the cast pattern that requires a huge heart inside that wide receiver. <laughs> and it also has to be a, a great arm by the quarterback because, Kenny, if you take a look at it from the perspective of from, from the end zone, there's almost like four defensive backs there. Well, the statistics tell the story, although it was only 21-14 Kansas City at the half. side to Carson and he was one man from a touchdown that man being the tackler Dave Dorson another first down at the bear 47 yard line well win or lose the fans in Kansas City who have had a long fall and cheering for the Chiefs have to be proud of how hard they played and well against this Chicago team and I'll tell you only one more first down puts Lowry in field goal range because he's got a strong leg Three and a half minutes remain. Plenty of time on the 32nd clock. Whoa! Herman Hurd slicing to the 43. Mike Richardson, Dan Hampton in on the tackle. See where they spot it. That'll be getting close to five. Dick. When you think back to the first quarter when Kenny was really picking the, the Chicago Bear defense apart, they were running a safety blitz with Durson. We have not seen that safety blitz since the first quarter since, since they went up two touchdowns. We may see it. Uh, you've got to send somebody. Herman Hurd able to fall on his own mistake at the 50-yard line, and that one was about to take a big bear bounce when Hurd smothered it for a loss. A loss of eight. Three wide receivers. Hey, Marshall comes in, Dick. Carlos Carson, while we have a quick moment to duck it in, he follows up his nine catch, two touchdown, 190 plus yards last week with seven catches, a touchdown, 137 yards today. You don't have to back in and get your check. Boy, front. Third and 13 for Kenny. Here they come. No one there. Carlos Carson wanted a penalty flag for a hold, but he wasn't near the ball anyway. The rush by Durson. It's been since the first quarter. All of a sudden, they brought the safety blitz on that play. That brings us to the two-minute timeout. One minute, 59 seconds left. Kansas City staring at fourth and 13. Will Gans go? You bet. It's given up more yards to Peyton than any other. The Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers, or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Which would you choose? There's a place where time has stood still. Your Packers. If you said Green Bay, you made the right choice. The Chiefs, big underdogs, leading throughout. They had a 28-14 lead early in the third period when Kenny 
hit Page a 43-yard score, but the Bears on a 32-yard field goal by Butler and two Willie Gold touchdown receptions from Jim McMahon have taken the lead 31-28 with 1.59 left. And for the first time, a few smiles on the Chicago sidelines. And there are two most valuable players in the game, Jim McMahon and Bill Kenny. The award sponsored by Budweiser. And to those two number nines, Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of the most valuable players today and all the games selected uh, throughout the NFL this afternoon. Look at McMahon turns cheerleader. Fourth and 13. This is it for Kansas City. How big that Hampton block field goal is, huh? Is it a good? No, out of bounds. Carson came down with it, but out of bounds. And he did an outstanding job of getting his body to the ball. That ball was just thrown a little bit too far, but Carlos Carson, watch this. He just gets away from the defender, and when he does that, that's Reggie Phillips. Carson did not have control. But the question, you know, the thing that they look at is... Could he have come down because he was pushed out by the defensive back? Big man's watching the play. Out, out, yeah. Well, he has those stripes on his arms. He could call that. Uh, he's back in the huddle now <laughs> calling the signals. And now it's up to Kansas City to use whatever timeouts are remaining. We're trying to get an official word. That is not information listed here on the scoreboards at Soldier Field as to the timeouts left. protecting the ball as he gets to the 48. I understand Kansas City now calling timeout. That's the first one they've used here in the second half. 146 remaining and the Bears by three. Fourth card first for Kansas City. Kenny certainly gets amazed today. Four touchdown passes, a personal high. Akoya had 83 yards rushing in the first half, only 10 in the second. And Page and Carson have been brilliant, 121, 137 yards for those two wideouts and a touchdown apiece. We'll look at the Bear card after this play. Second and seven, one minute, 46 seconds left. The Bears just trying to run it out with the lead. Anderson again, protecting the ball. Timeout, Kansas City. One timeout remaining for the Chiefs as Del Rio makes the tackle on Anderson. Dick, there was just one point in this game where the Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs stopped doing the things that got them their first 21 points. And when they did that, they gave the ball game back to Chicago. The Bears, McMahon with a brilliant second half. He's only missed on 11 passes today, three touchdown throws. I shall return, he says. Anderson, 52 yards rushing. Bozo has contributed with a touchdown and 51 yards. Gentry with that big touchdown return on a kickoff that really kept the Bears in the game in the first half. Willie Galt didn't make the list. That's how many. <laughs> Willie Galt only had a couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter to really uh, put the uh, exclamation point on the Bear comeback. You know, as you look at the Bears on the sideline, you got Ditka running all over the place, yelling and screaming. This team, they have 45 guys on it. They just walk around. They know that they can win. They know they're never out of a ball game. There's Galt's numbers for today. It's a big play for Kansas City. They have to stop the Bears. Reverse. And it's Peyton who winds up with the ball on the fake. Reverse and a first down. And with that, Kansas and a flag is down. <laughs> Face mask against Kansas City. You know, we, we say he's lost a step, you know, and Walter has not had a great game. He's in there. He's an inspirational player. But just take a look at what Walter does on this play to get the first down because it wasn't there. Here comes Dino Hackett. He hits him, and that's not first down. Ross is there, number 31. He hits him. Del Rio, it's number 50, gets pass. there. But 60, Peyton gets the first pass. down. First and with that, Kansas City 
already having used two of its timeouts and now another four downs for the Bears so it's academic Peyton finishes or at least at this point eight carries only 15 yards this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited no first down with 130 left and the Bears apparently back-to-back -back Sundays with come from behind wins. Anderson trying to stay in bounds and does. Want to thank our core to Costanza, Joe Costanza and company, Tom Valdesari, John Engler, Ted Carlson, Craig Chevelle for their help today. Raiders also on the comeback. Picked him. Miami has won it. That was one of your picks, Raiders. 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 Well, who'd you have in the Washington I Buffalo play. game? I didn't do that one. Which ones did you have? Yeah, the Jets. That one's a downer, huh? You're down on that one. They didn't listen. Indianapolis wins. Hey, the Colts are going to be a factor now with Dickerson, and they're four and three. No worse than a tie for first. Ooh, St. Louis has scored a bunch in a hurry. They Let's did. Atlanta's in trouble. Yeah, it's over though. I know. That's say, a good in, I mean, they're in a lot of trouble all year. And now it's just the. Uh, one part of the game that I guess the brightest minds in football can't prevent and that's where you can end the game by sitting on the uh, on the pill just let it ride out this was a great football game I don't care you know when you when you take a team I said the one thing about Kansas City if they got behind the Chicago against the Chicago Bears I didn't okay. think that they could come from behind and win it but you got to feel it you always know that the Bears can come from behind the Kansas City Chiefs, when I said something to you before at the beginning of the game, if, as long as they didn't turn the ball over, they're fine. The long pass to Page, next play, Christian Okoya, fumble, cost them the ball game. But you know, great teams find a way to win, don't they, Paul? Yeah, Look they what do. the Bears have done, even though it wasn't their best game. Dan Hampton blocks a field goal, or we would be tied. Gentry returns a kickoff for a touchdown for a quick seven in the first half. They force the fumble of Okoya here late in the game to deny Kansas City a chance to build their lead back over a touchdown lead. They found a way to win again. And uh, sometimes, and I'm sure that Ditka will uh, be unhappy when he looks at the films. It wasn't the Bears' best effort, but they've come out of Tampa Bay 27-26, and they're going to win today 31-28 when they really, and the frustration of the opponents, really should have lost both games. But That's they were right. good enough to pull it out. You make a great point about the fact that great teams like the Bears, great football teams, good football teams, know that they're never out of it. A struggling team like the Kansas City Chiefs get away from what got him to 21 to 28 points. All of a sudden, they're trying to protect the lead. The Bears don't do that. They go after the lead, and that's the difference. That was the last time out used by Kansas City, 114 left. So really only two more snaps of the ball, and uh, McMahon does the NFL kneel, and it's over. Oh, Jim McMahon, after shoulder surgery, second half last week was 17 for 24. Another great game today, Anderson. Oh, I don't know about Anderson. that. Running that play with Anderson <laughs> carrying, everyone diving for the ball, but he hangs on. McMahon hitting 27, 23 of 34, and Kenny equally brilliant, but not good enough to win it. Chiefs will lose their sixth straight game but uh, they will find that they're capable of, as you said, they're a good enough team to beat anyone, and they showed that today. And the, and the good thing, too, is a week ago they made a decision that Kenny is now going to be our quarterback and not Blackledge. And I, if you looked at his performance against San Diego, very good. If you look at his performance today against Chicago, very good. So I think that's the confidence factor he needed. Stay tuned for NFL Live and a uh, rundown of all the scores. And all, Paul, I really enjoyed the opportunity to have you in the booth out here and uh, tell all of the guys back in New York that we enjoy all their terrific work. And they will run into each other again for the years over. Well, Merlin also told me he was easy to work with, but he lied. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it, my friend. It's been a lot of fun. It has been an outstanding game. And the final seconds tick away as the Chicago Bears, with only one defeat, replacement loss, and although Kansas City has this uh, final opportunity, and uh, Kennedy, Kenny has certainly shown that he can hit long, but he's got some Bears playing way downfield. I'd get somebody down about the 20-yard line to have him waiting. Carson. No, it's intercepted by Reggie Phillips. 
at the 48 yard line and the tackle made by Carson and every official threw his flag on that obvious face mask. I mean it, the game's over but that's that that'll be one of those 15 yard face masks because he not only held on to the face mask but spun him around and threw him down and now Carson Carlos is apologizing. Yeah he was just continuing his motion and just grabbed yeah. whatever he could get. He swung him all the way around did a 360 with his head. And that's a that should be a 15 yard deal. It doesn't make any difference anyway. It's all over. Well Kenny with no timeouts in the full field to go just didn't have too many options open. That is not a happy man. Well it started so brilliantly for Kansas City with their four wins in the preseason four and one and all the hopes that go with it and then the opening day win against the Chargers and now six straight defeats. Uh, it is a team uh, that has talent and uh, it just I guess it's kind of like playing that front nine when you're already 20 over par and wondering if you're going to have a good day on the course. <laughs> This then should be the final play of the game. That'll do it. We're going to endeavor to get Jim McMahon for his comments to see whether the quarterback of the Bears will be available. 